So I want to introduce a, a new meditation for some of you. I've been introducing this. I started in Croatia and then I've been presenting it to the online groups as we've been meeting. And uh, the, the practice I'm going to be offering is one that comes from the Taoist tradition. When Buddhism made its way to China, uh, it folded in the existing religions, principally Taoism and Confucianism, into, into Buddhism that became the Chan, which became Zen. So the, uh, this practice, so, so Taoist practices, there's a few embedded in the Zen tradition. They're mostly taught more, we would call it secret teachings in that they're not really publicly taught that much. But I, in teaching it, I've been finding a lot of value. People are finding a lot of benefit from it. That's why I'm including it. It's called the self-winding wheel. And it's not a great name, but the self-winding wheel just means it's a practice that once it gets established, it'll operate on its own. It'll just be happening. And the practice is a visualization practice. If you're a visual meditator, and I'll explain for both the visual and felt sense meditators, but uh, everyone is bringing awareness to the base of the spine, the tail of the spine. And ideally, when the practice is in place, uh, on the in-breath, we would visualize a golden amber thick liquid, like a honey almost consistency, coming up the spine and it would, by the end of the in-breath, reach the crown chakra where we pause the breath. And then on the exhale, we're visualizing, seeing or feeling this amber golden liquid coming down the front. So the face, nose, mouth, uh, throat, chest, stomach and then when it gets to the hara it it turns inward and it collects in a cauldron or bowl whatever you see as a receptacle there so we'll start this pr practice by uh i'll guide you through it but we'll, we, when we get to the hara we'll focus a little bit on you making contact with your vessel whatever uh, whatever's there. I mean, for me, I see a, a metal black cauldron, like a you'd cook over an open fire in the woods kind of thing, um, is what I see. And the this amber golden liquid collects into this cauldron. It's believed in the Zen tradition that this is uh, an important practice to do because it helps cultivate and develop spiritual energy that's being generated from practice. And it's believed in the Zen tradition, if enough of this amber golden liquid is collected, then that can result in the spark of Kensho. For folks who do koan practice, one of the places the koan can be held is in the hara, and that's why we're holding it with that spiritual energy, and that can lead to the uh, opening, the experience of Kensho and the resolution of the koan. So, um, let's go ahead and start with a couple of belly breaths. Letting yourself deeply relax into this moment. Feel your contact with your seat. Feel the support of the building you're in holding you. Let your body relax. Let any optional tension, any holding of stress that's influenced by you, just lighten that a little bit. Open that tightness, that holding. Really invite some ease into your meditation. A 
With the next in-breath, invite awareness to the hara. Finding that important inner seat. And while we're in the hara, let's make contact with that receptacle, that bowl, vase, cauldron. It can be any of any material that can hold liquid. It can be any color or design, any composition. It just needs to be able to hold this important nectar. A sense into the receptacle that's here for you, feeling its dimensions, its shape, the material it's made from, whether it's ceramic or metal, some other substance. You feel its stability, its presence, the here-ness of it. On the next in-breath, invite awareness into the heart area. We're opening here to innate goodness, that brilliantly bright, uplifting quality. I often see innate goodness like sunlight coming through a heavily forested wood where the sun just breaks through here and there with these brilliant beams of light. That warm yellow sunlight breaking through and illuminating the darkness before it, what's not, what's unlit, if that's a word. So feel that golden ray of sunshine, its warmth, the aliveness in it. You know, the uplifting quality of innate goodness, the buoyancy, the ease, That warm flow. Let the innate goodness just fill your awareness as fully as it wishes.
I often feel innate goodness is like seeing a kitchen sponge that's dry and to see water make contact where this dry sponge that seems very brittle all of a sudden becomes very full and supple. Has a lot of ability to bend and flex. Just a lot of openness and a lot of flexibility. That's how we are when we make contact with innate goodness. Because we feel that deep connection to the source, to the absolute. And we take comfort in the fact that we don't create it. We don't maintain it and we can't make it go away. It's always here. You're relieved of all responsibility to make innate goodness or to keep it going. All we have to do is open to it, orient to it. On the next in-breath, invite awareness to the Dharma eye, also called the wisdom eye, in the center of the forehead. The opening and developing of the wisdom eye, the Dharma eye, assists us in inner sight, meditative sight. It also helps us cultivate intuitive knowing. I know based on contact rather than on reflection and the working of concepts. Breathing into the wisdom eye. Feeling the potency of this organ of perception. On the next in-breath, invite awareness to, to the crown chakra. This is an important, important portal, a doorway that allows us both to journey to other realms such as the formless jhanas, to make contact with the depths of the Absolute and even to explore the Absolute and possibly witness other universes. The Crown Chakra also is the portal to receive. This is how we receive the Absolute So bring your awareness to the tail of your spine. <clears throat> and on the next in-breath, invite awareness as this golden amber liquid as it makes its way up your spine. It'll take a few breaths, a few cycles for it to get to the right consistency and flow. So for now, just use your breath and the breath invites this amber liquid to ascend from the base of the spine to the crown chakra.
Once the amber liquid has made its way to the crown chakra up the back, then on the next exhale, let it begin to move down the front of the body, over the eyes and nose, mouth and chin, over the neck and top of the chest, down to the belly where it turns in to fall into the cauldron or bowl you have there in the hara. If you're a felt sense meditator, then you're just making contact with all this process through its felt sense. So just keep working on cycling this amber, golden, honey-like liquid, letting it move up the spine to the crown chakra, and then down the front and into the receptacle in the hara. We'll do this for a few minutes. And just notice when you get to the rhythm of the in-breath and the liquid going all the way to the crown chakra on that in-breath, you pause the breath and then begin the exhale as it descends towards and into the cauldron. It'll begin to move on its own. You won't need to have any deliberateness. Just breathing, the liquid will follow this path. So we'll stay here for a few minutes before moving on. Notice how that flow is beginning to operate on its own when you become more of an observer than a participant. Just let that happen.
So go ahead and drop any any intention to apply awareness to the self-winding wheel. Just let that practice be. As you bring awareness to your interiority, and we or, we orient to see whether body and mind are in a flow of unity or if they're separate. Get a felt sense for that in your experience. If body and mind are in a unity, just rest in that unity. If body and mind are not flowing into unity, they're likely separated by a conceptual division. Mind is in the head and body is in the rest of our body from the neck down. And people typically have some type of separation between the two. It might be in the neck or elsewhere. If you're feeling body, mind, and separation, Hold all three of those equally with no intention on anything changing. Just bring full awareness to body, mind, and any separation. Staying with body, mind, and separation, you begin to witness the separation breaking down, falling away, becoming transparent. As body and mind begin to flow in their natural unity. yourself experience that flow of unity The unity of body and mind is stage one of the meditation Shikantaza. As you're resting in the inner flow of body-mind, 
Taking that as interior, let awareness and consciousness make contact with what's immediately outside the body, the atmosphere, the viscosity. So maintaining awareness on the inner unity flow of body-mind, let awareness and consciousness touch the field outside the body. Are these two, inner and outer, the same or different? You'll notice the separation probably at the body boundary, at the skin. If you do find a separation, then just hold inner and outer and the separation as one without a need or plan for any change. As the inner and outer begin to harmonize, you'll find the stability of the body boundary as a primary form of self-identity will begin to open up, to fall away, to become transparent. When the inner and outer meet as one, there's a unity, a flow of inner and outer. Let that connection, contact, and flow continue. Feel the sameness between inner, inner and outer. 
You might even feel the sameness with the body boundary. They're all a oneness of the same making. As the body boundary begins to drop, let awareness rest where the body boundary is not, where it's absent. Notice where the body boundary is not. And as awareness is resting on the unity of inner and outer, which is stage three of Shikantaza, stage two is that harmonization of inner and outer. Stage one is the harmonization or unity of mind and body. And now at stage three, we just begin to let awareness open into this unified field. This vast open space that's before us. Let awareness reach in every direction feeling, sensing, for an end, a boundary or limit to this vast space before us. Those of you with inner sight may be witnessing the intense blackness of the field, a rich, dark, luminous blackness, extending in every direction we can sense or look. We'll sit silently together for a bit and then I'll ring the bell. 